Hi, this is Simone from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Today I'm sharing with you information about our free API sample file. What is Shopify? It's a complete commerce platform that lets you start, grow, and manage a business. How does Shopify work? Well, it unifies all your commerce onto a single platform. You build and customize an online store and sell in multiple places. It's cloud-based and hosted, so it can be accessed from anywhere. Shopify has loads of information on its website, including a two-minute overview video. I'll include the link below. On their website, I was able to find a blog titled, What is Shopify and How Does It Work? It has links for a guided tour of Shopify. I will include the link to the blog below. In the What is Shopify section, there's a YouTube video worth exploring if you need more information. In addition to blogs and videos, there's plenty of information you can read on their website prior to purchasing. After browsing all the information on their website, if you still need more time to make a decision, they have a three-day trial period. I've also included here their pricing structure. So with all the wonderful tools that Shopify has available, why integrate? Well, that's a good question. With Claris FileMaker Pro, you can make it even better. You can customize a solution that's specific to your workflow and specific to your business needs. Shopify alone may not be able to deliver everything you need, but a custom Claris FileMaker Pro solution can. I thought I'd give you some use case scenarios in our core CRM Pro demo file. In this file, you have the option to connect your QuickBooks account with the solution. So if you are able to pull in sales information from Shopify, then you could also connect that information with QuickBooks. The API integration gives you a central location to manage all your information. Claris FileMaker Pro caters to all skill levels. But in my opinion, API integration requires an intermediate to advanced skill level. I am a visual learner, so as a developer, I completely appreciate the Shopify API sample file to show enough to get started and then point me in the right direction for more. Now let's take a look at the sample file. The first thing you will need to do in order to link up your Shopify account is to make sure your Shopify store is accessible through their REST API. On the admin page for your store, you will see a list of areas in the left navigation bar. You want to select the apps and sales channels. This will show you all the various sales channels associated with your account. You want to select develop apps on the top right. If you haven't already done so, you will need to allow custom app development on your account. Once that is done, select the Create an App button. You'll give the app a name and click Create App. After creating the app, you will be taken to a screen with four tabs across the top. Click on the Configuration tab. Click on the Admin Integration Configure button to take you to the Admin API Access Scopes. There is technically a way to connect without using the admin API scope, but it does require access to OAuth authentication servers, application publishing, and advanced key encryption techniques, which are a little bit beyond the scope of this demonstration. So for the purposes of this demo, we are just going to use the admin API access scopes. You want to allow access to the areas of Shopify that are demonstrated in this sample file. In this case, it's customers. So you'll want to select Write and Read Customers. You will notice that once you select Write, Read is automatically selected for you. This will give you access in both a Read and a Write way the customer's data for your Shopify account. After saving the scopes, head on over to the API Credentials tab and click on Install App and Confirm. You will now have the option to review the Admin API Access Token. As shown here, this can only be done once. I'm going to repeat that, once. So make sure you are ready to save it somewhere before you click on the reveal. After you do this, you will not be able to get the token again. Now copy it and save it somewhere safe and paste it into the Admin API Access Token field in the sample file. The Admin API Access Token field 
has a control style of concealed edit box, so you won't be able to copy and paste it. Data is one way in and no way out. You will also need to enter the shop name. This information can be found on your Shopify account settings in the upper left hand corner. You will use everything before the dot myshopify.com. The URL endpoint information can be found in the API documentation, which we will go over a little later in this video. This field will automatically be filled in when we run the customer scripts. Now that we have the setup complete, let's start moving some data back and forth. After going to the Customers tab, the first thing you will do is get Customers. If everything is configured correctly, this is going to reach out and download the customer list from Shopify, fill in all the data, and set the global field with a timestamp indicating when this was last performed. If you have a very large list of customers, this process can take a good amount of time. So by adding a timestamp field, you can run the subsequent searches of customers who were added or modified from that timestamp. This, of course, is something you have the option of adding into your solution or not. After each communication with Shopify, the results will also be listed here in the results field. Now let's push a new customer to Shopify. To do this, click the manual button. This will create a new record in the sample file. You will add your customer information and then click the Push to Shopify button. You will notice that before we push the record, the Shopify ID is blank. After we push the record, the Shopify ID field is filled in from the results. So after pushing the new customer to Shopify, I went ahead and made some changes to that customer on the Shopify website. I want to show you how the Get Customer button works after we have already pulled the customer list once. The script for that button only grabs the customers who were added or modified after the timestamp in the global field. This next section is special just for my fellow developers, but end users and business owners are encouraged to stick around. All the tables, fields, relationships, layouts, buttons, and scripts are in the sample file to guide you in your own solution, so let's take a look now. There are three tables in the sample file. They are main, customer, and address. The main table acts as the driver table. It will store things like the admin API access token, shop name, endpoints, and results from the API calls. The customer table stores customer information pushed and pulled from Shopify. And the address table also stores information about the customers pushed and pulled. There is a separate table for this since you can have more than one address linked to a customer in Shopify. The relationships graph has three table occurrences. The main table is connected to the customer table with a simple Cartesian join. The customer table is connected to the address table by the customer ID and sorted so the default address will appear first in the portal list. There are three main scripts, get customers, add customer, and push customer. We're going to take a look at get customers first. We want to make sure we have all the information we need before we get started. If we don't, you'll get a custom dialog and the script will exit. Next, we are going to set the URL for the call. On the first call, we are going to set it without any additional parameters so it will pull all customers. If the last customer sync field has information, we are adding the parameter to only grab customers who were added or modified after the timestamp that this was last run. The date and time has been conformed to the Shopify date and time format since we are unable to pass a FileMaker timestamp. So when we call the API, we are using the insert from URL script step. We set the target as the results field. We will specify the URL as the field URL current, which we set above. We are also going to add some additional information in the header. The first one is the content type. Basically, it is letting the API know that we are sending information in the JSON format. And the other is our access token, which is going to be our authentication using the X Shopify access token. It's sending the admin API access token that we need in order to access the scope. The token has to be able to access the scope, which we'll discuss a little bit more later, or you're going to get a permissions error. After we call the API, the rest of the script is going to parse the results. 
did we get some data back? And if so, we're going to loop through these results and either add or modify them in the table. In this part of the script, we're looking to see if there is already a record for the customer ID. If there isn't one, we will create a new record. As we loop through all the fields and either add or modify customers, we are going to have to loop through the addresses similarly, since a customer can have one or more addresses. The Add Customer script is just two steps, new window and new record. Let's take a look at the Push Customer script. In the beginning of this script, we are looking to see if the customer already has an ID. If they do, we will exit the script. This script only works if no customer exists on Shopify. Then we are going to set a parameter with JSON, which we will use later to push the customer data to Shopify. The parameter will first set the customer data, then loop through any addresses we have entered. Just like in the Get Customer script, we will set the URL current field with the endpoint to use later in the URL script step. We will also set the target as the results field, and we will specify the URL as the field which we set above. To push data to Shopify, we must use the post method, so we will add that here. We are also using the same header information, and then adding the data which we compiled in the JSON variable here. This is how we get the information into Shopify. After we get the results, we will set the customer ID in the record, and if there are any addresses, we will set those too. Let's take a quick look at the layouts in the sample file. There are three layouts. Two layouts are user interfacing, and one is just for scripts. The main layout has two tabs. One is for setup, and the other is for the customer information. The customer layout is the layout that is used to push a new customer or view an existing customer information. The API Docs button in the sample file is going to take you to the Shopify developer site. Here there is loads of information to help you decide what information is available and what actions you'd like to take when it comes to pushing and pulling between your custom solution and Shopify. When viewing the documentation, you want to make sure in the client libraries you have curl enabled. This is going to most resemble the format we use in FileMaker. There is also information on authentication, endpoints and requests, rate limits, plus status and error code. After reviewing those, take a look at all the different scopes available. In the sample file, we use the customer scope, but there is much more for you to incorporate into your solution. When viewing the information for each section, you will see examples of the API calls, examples of what the results are supposed to look like, and even access requirements. The Shopify Apps button is going to take you to the settings for your Shopify account. This will cover all settings for your Shopify account, including the apps and sales channels we use to set up the API. Tables and scripts can be imported directly in your solution from the demo file, while layouts and value lists can be copied and pasted. Just be careful of the order because some rely on each other to function properly. Always check for errors after importing or copying and pasting. While in the sample file, there is a convenient button to take you to the Help Center for plugins. There is plenty of information to get you started with any question there. This is something you could always incorporate into your own file for easy access to information if you need it. Now that you are ready to incorporate your Shopify store with your Claris FileMaker Pro solution, you are probably wondering where to find the sample file. Go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Once there, click on Courses. From there, you can use the search field or click on Free. There you will find the FileMaker Features and Free Resources course. This is where you can enroll for free. If API integration is new to you, you can also sign up for our API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers course. Productive computing can be hired for custom FileMaker development and consultation or FileMaker application integration. 
We also have a monthly Claris FileMaker Maintenance Support Program. All of the information regarding these different services can be found on our website, ProductiveComputing.com. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. For more Claris and FileMaker training tips, go ahead and subscribe. And for more information, go to ProductiveComputing.com.